Hi, I'm Jan Kleiner, and I'm a developer advocate on the OpenShift team at Red Hat. Of all the new features of the OpenShift 4.2 release, what I've been looking forward to the most are the developer-focused updates to the web console. If you've used OpenShift 4.1, then you're probably already familiar with the updated administrator console, which is where you can manage workloads, storage, networking, cluster settings, and more. The addition of the new developer perspective aims to give developers an optimized experience with the features and workflows they most likely need to be productive. Let's take a tour of the developer perspective and explore some of the key features. You can change the developer perspective with this dropdown. We're starting with the topology view. The topology view takes a very application-centric view of a project. So with our project selected, the topology view is displaying the different components that make up our application. You can see the name of the component. In this case, backend is our backend component. We also have a database, MongoDB. And these are the components that make up our application. You can also see the pod status indicated by this circle here, as well as build status and links to source code and routes when those are available. Components that are part of an application will all be in the same grouping, as you can see here with this lighter gray color surrounding these components. And you can optionally use these arrows to connect components within an application to help show relationships between those components. When you click on an application in Topology View, a side panel will appear with information about that component. Here you can see on the Resources tab, we have the pods that are running, builds, services, and in our case, we don't have any routes, but those would appear here. You also have shortcut links to view the logs for pods or to view your build logs, all from this page. The overview tab will give you information about this deployment and also allow you to scale up or down the number of pods as needed. To add additional components to your application, you can use this plus add link here on the left-hand navigation. When we click this, you're presented with some different options. You can import code from a Git repository. You can deploy an existing container image. You can browse the developer catalog to discover services that are available. You can import a Docker file from a Git repository, or you can create resources directly from YAML or JSON definitions. And then finally, there are a list of database services that you can select from to add to your application. Let's add a front end to this application and we'll use the from git option here. I will type in the GitHub URL for our front end component. This happens to be a Node.js application, so I'll select that here. And then as we scroll down, you can see that there's various other settings we can choose from. We'll change the name of the component to front end. This option here, which is selected by default, allows us to create a route to the application. This will expose it so that there is a public facing URL for users to be able to actually access our application. You can see there's also advanced options here for routing, build configuration, deployment configuration, scaling, resource limits, and labels. We'll click in here to deployment configuration because there's some environment variables I need to set for this. These are just environment variables that are specific to this particular application. Okay, with those environment variables entered, we'll click Create. And the process will start of building and deploying this component within our application. You can see that it's already automatically included within this outline of our application. And we can go ahead and set up the arrows that indicate the relationship between these components now. So in this case, our front end communicates with the back end. And the back end also communicates with the front end. OK, so as I mentioned before, you can see the build status. I'm going to click on that. And it will take me directly to the build logs if I wanted to look in that in more detail. I can click on topology to get back to that topology view. And as we did with the back end, I can click on this component here to view the overview tab and resources. It remembers which tab I had last clicked, um, which is why we see overview this time. I can click on resources where we can see the status of that build that's running. Once that completes, we'll be able to see the pods that have come up. You can see our build is complete now. And soon we should see the pods, the pod coming up. 
We can watch the status of the pods here. It's also indicated by the color of this ring. You can see it's light blue and then becomes dark blue once the pod is running. So again, we have a link to access pod logs here. And now that we have our front end up and running, we can click on either this URL here to access the application or this icon here will open the URL in the browser. There's our application. All right, so moving on to some other features. In this build section, you can see a listing of the build configurations in your application. If you click into either of these, you can get more information, um, including the builds, environment variables, events, and more. If you have the OpenShift Pipelines operator installed in your cluster, then you'll have this Pipelines option in the left-hand navigation. In the project we have here, you can see that we have a pipeline set up and it's just started running. So you can view the pipelines as well as the pipeline runs and see what the status is. You can also view the logs. Another handy feature of Topology View are these links to access source code. If I click this one here, it will open up a link to the GitHub repository from which the code was built. So we covered just a few features in OpenShift 4.2. I hope that was a useful introduction for you. To really get a sense of how the developer perspective can help you be more productive on OpenShift, try it out for yourself. You can install a 4.2 OpenShift cluster by going to try.openshift.com. There are several infrastructure options available, including laptop, which allows you to install OpenShift locally on your laptop or desktop using code-ready containers. So head on over to try.openshift.com and try it for yourself. Thanks for listening.